Yo, what's up everybody, Professor V here, and in this video, we will be looking over the four lobes of the brain. The brain is the most remarkable, complex, and misunderstood part of us. It's fascinating to say the least, for something so small, so light in weight, to control so many functions. Without it, we could not exist as we do. However, neuroscientists have identified where a few certain functions are generally controlled and have divided the brain up into four sections called lobes. This is a nice, squishy brain. Now, when you look at the brain, you are looking at the cerebral cortex. It is the outermost layer of the brain. Within the cerebral cortex, some of the most complex processes take place, such as thinking and planning. You may also notice the brain is very wrinkly. This is to give the brain a larger surface area to perform these complex tasks. A ridge of the cerebral cortex is a gyrus, gyri for plural, and a furrow in between the gyri is a sulcus or sulci, for plural. The cerebral cortex shown here, now in color, is divided into four sections. The red section is the frontal lobe. The light blue is the parietal lobe. The green is the occipital lobe, and the yellow sections are the temporal lobes. Each of these sections are known to control certain functions. Again, the occipital lobe of the brain in green is located towards the back of the head and is responsible for responding to visual stimuli or the incoming images transmitted by the eye. Reflected light from objects in our visual field projects onto the retina, a layer of cells in the back of the eye. The information is converted into electrochemical signals that travel down the optic nerve and converges onto the occipital lobe of the brain. These electrochemical signals are then processed by the occipital lobe and then you become aware of what you are looking at. The occipital lobe processes information such as color, shape, and motion of objects in your visual field. Your eyes can function normally, but if there are any lesions to the occipital lobe of the brain caused by injury or stroke, it can render a person blind as the eyes are only responsible for transmitting the information, not actually processing or making sense of the information. It is up to the occipital lobe of the brain to make you become aware of what you are looking at. The yellow sections are the temporal lobes. You have two and they are each slightly above the ears, and it is involved in hearing, language, and memory. When your ears detect sound waves going into your ears, there are specialized cells that convert the sound into electrochemical signals, which then go to your temporal lobes. When the auditory cortex portion of the temporal lobes process the electrochemical signals, coming from the ear, you become conscious of what you are hearing. The temporal lobes also have numerous connections to the limbic system of the brain, mainly the amygdala and the hippocampus. When there are lesions to these areas, a person would be unable to create new long-term memories. The light blue section is the parietal lobe of the brain. It is involved in spatial location, attention, and motor control. For instance, for spatial location, the parietal lobe judges how far you have to throw a ball to get it to your teammate, or shifting your attention to detect the location of a loud noise and then turning your head quickly. There is also a specialized part of the parietal lobe called the somatosensory cortex, which is responsible for processing information about body sensations. This can be touch. When you hold your partner's hand, the sensory neurons in your hand detects a touch, converts it into electrochemical signals, sends these signals to the somatosensory cortex, and once the signals are processed, you become aware of you holding your partner's hand. Lesions on the somatosensory cortex can lead to a stereogenosis in which a person will be unable to detect touch without other sensory input, such as seeing someone touch them. 
Lastly, the frontal cortex, highlighted here in red, it lies just behind the forehead and is involved in personality, intelligence, and the control of voluntary muscles. To understand the functions of the frontal lobe, it's best to discuss the very famous case study of Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage was a railroad worker in the mid 1800s, and at the age of 25 in 1848, he suffered a terrible accident in which there was an explosion which drove a metal rod through the left side of his face, through the frontal lobe of his brain, and out the top of his skull. Tragic, but Phineas Gage survived the accident. Previous to the accident, his family, friends, and co-workers described him as mild-mannered, extremely hardworking, and extremely calm. He was well-liked by those around him. However, after the incident, he became stubborn, hot-tempered, aggressive, and unreliable. It was the damage to his frontal lobe that caused his shift in personality. The frontal lobe also contains the motor cortex. The motor cortex processes information about voluntary motor movement and initiates the necessary electrochemical signals that travel to our muscles to produce movement. Another brain region that lies in the frontal lobe of the brain is the prefrontal cortex. This area of the brain is responsible for higher cognitive functions such as planning, decision making, reasoning, predicting, and self-control. Parts of the prefrontal cortex was damaged in Phineas Gage as well. It is also important to understand that the functions described are not the only functions for each lobe or that the localizing function within a particular lobe. Each lobe of the brain communicates with other parts of the brain and some functions may overlap between lobes and other parts of the brain. Well, that's it for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it, learned something new, or reinforced something you already knew. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Share with someone you may know that is taking a psychology or neuroscience course and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.